high. And do you guys know what today is? Christmas Eve. Isn't that amazing? Guess what that means tomorrow is? Christmas. Well, what if we decide, no, we don't really need Christmas. Let's not have Christmas. Is that okay? No. 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 Yeah, we have to celebrate baby Jesus' birthday. What are you talking about, Pastor? You are so right. It wouldn't matter, by the way, even if we didn't celebrate, Christmas still comes, doesn't it? Do any of you have these little manger scenes at your house? I want to talk just a little bit about the different characters that are in the manger scene. Um, I first want to start with this one. Can you guys tell what this is? It's a cow. It's a cow. Why is there a cow at Jesus' birth? Yes, because it's a stable or a farm, and the cow was already there. The cow was living. See, this is the little stable, and the cow probably was eating... And then some people came in and took over a little part of its house. And maybe in the real world it didn't exactly look like this. It probably in Israel was a cave or a little piece of the courtyard in the very back. But that's where they kept their animals so their animals could. Now, now why did people come to the, to the cow's house to have the baby? How come Mary didn't go to a hospital? There weren't any hospitals back then. And they were going to be in this like hotel thing a lot, but then they didn't have enough room, so then they found that. That was a technical term. They were supposed to be in the hotel me thingy, my Bob. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and there was no place for them. Were any of you born in a stable? No. No. Any of you born in a hospital? Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty nice way to be born. Yeah. Um, but there was no hospital back then, and there was no room for them in the hotel. It was probably The hotel wasn't like we think of hotels with big, tall things. It was probably just a big house that somebody rented rooms or spots up on the roof. Their roofs were flat, and they would give them kind of a sleeping bag, and they would sleep out on the roof, and you'd pay somebody a little bit of money to sleep out on the roof of the hotel. But when they got there, guess what? There were people everywhere, just like right now. They couldn't even walk through the streets. They had to push people out of the way. They just crumble all, oh, oh, oh! They probably, people sleeping everywhere. Excuse me. And that's what it was like all through Bethlehem. Piggy. Piggy? I don't know what the theology of that is, but that's okay. Um, uh, though it might have to do with how I eat. Um, okay, so, so there was no room anywhere. The city was full because people had come from everywhere because the king, the ruler, Caesar had said, we need to count you. And in order to make sure we count everybody, you gotta go back to your hometown. And, and you, gotta, you gotta go there. So Mary and Joseph went to the hometown and there was no room anywhere in the city. No houses had extra bedrooms. Every bed was full, every couch was full. There were people everywhere, and when they got there, she was very, very, very pregnant. And so they looked for a place. Okay, so that's why there's a stable, and that's why there's a cow. Um, why is there, you guys know what this is? A sheep. There's something very special about why there were sheep. How come there was a sheep there? Because there were shepherds there. See, this is the shepherd boy. And this is his sheep. Aren't they cute? Bah. Uh, um, there were... Okay, everybody, make sheep noises. Bah. Boy, that's a pretty spastic sheep. I'm sorry. Um, well, that was good. Um, the shepherds came. Remember, they were out in the field? And the angels wanted to send the shepherds. Now, do you realize that almost every shepherd was not an adult, but was a child? You remember the story of David? He was the youngest boy, and he was out watching the sheep when, when they came to look for who was going to be the next king. So you guys, if you had a job back then, 
you might have to spend the night out with the sheep all night long. Whoa. Could you guys stay awake that long? It'd be hard. That's, that's why people didn't like to have jobs as shepherds. It was a hard thing to do, and, and they, had to, they had to stay awake. And so mostly it was a bunch of kids who were watching the sheep out in the field, either their sheep or sheep that belonged to the temple because they were getting ready for, for a special ceremony that they needed sheep. And so uh, they were watching all of these flocks outside of Bethlehem, and then the angel appeared. That sounds like a Star Wars theme, doesn't it? Maybe it's the Star Wars. This is the Wookiee angel. No. Um, uh, what was the angel doing? Why did the angel do? Because Jesus is the Son of God, all the angels who lived in heaven wanted to see this amazing thing, that God was going to come down and become a baby. What a crazy thing. And the angels had seen Jesus in his glory. They'd seen him putting things together. They'd seen him running the whole universe. And all of a sudden, the thought that he was going to be a little bitty baby. I'm going to ask you, were any of you ever babies? Yes. Yes? Were you cute? Or were you kind of not so cute? I was a very ugly baby. <laughs> Seen pictures, I looked mostly like a worm. I had no hair, kind of elongated. It was not pretty. But, but look what happened. <laughs> Proves there's a God, right? I became so beautiful. Okay, I'm just joking. You know that, don't you? Um, so the angels want to see what's going on, so they show up. But they don't want to just show up by themselves. They are sent by God. You see, the word angel really just means messenger, the person who comes to bring the message. And God sends them first to the shepherd boy, and, and he says to them, to all the shepherd kids that are out in the field, Whoa, guess what? Unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now go to the, to the stable and you'll find the baby there. And then all of a sudden, all of the angels show up. You wonder if they pushed and shoved so they could get a seat to be able to, to sing in that choir for a second because they start singing. You know, it's very interesting. It says that the angels were an army. An army of angels showed up. That's what the Bible says. It's, it's, sometimes we use the word host, but in the original language, it says an army of angels. Like they all showed up and they sang because of Jesus' amazing birth. Um, okay, now, uh, what about this? What's this? A camel. A camel. A camel, can you guys see the camel? Yes. Why is there a camel in my, in my nativity, in my manger scene? Yes. Because Mary rode on it. Well, it could have been that Mary rode on the camel. They probably took rides around the stable, paid somebody. That's what you do when you go to Israel right now. You pay somebody with a camel a few, a few dollars and you can ride. But that's not only, I don't think really it was there for rides. Okay, what else? Yes, they were wise men. They're over here. These are the wise men. And I can't really put them on the camel very good. And they rode across the devil. You know where they came from? It says they came from the east. What we think is probably true is they came from Iraq, Iraq. Iraq's a pretty far place away, but they came and they were, they were wise men, they were studiers of the stars. I think that when the, Iraq is in the Bible called something different, it's called Babylon. And the Jews had been carried to Babylon and they'd lived there for many years and I think they made friends in Babylon or in Iraq who later would study the, the books that the Jews had brought. 
Does anybody remember the story of, of Daniel in the lion's den? You remember Daniel it gets, gets caught doing something really bad that day. He was praying. And, and somebody tricked the king, and the king threw him into a pit, and they let a bunch of lions into the pit too. And guess what happened? The lions ate him up. No? no? Woo! That would be a really bad story, wouldn't it? Yeah, the same angels came. It was a lot of years before that. Maybe it was, baby, it was different angels or it was the same angel. We don't know, but they came and they were with Daniel in the lion's den and the lions were so afraid that they just shut their mouths and were like kitty cats sitting over in the corner. That's what happened. Okay, well that's, that happened, all of that happened. Do you remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who went into the fiery furnace? They too had a king that was mad at them. He threw them into a, into a big fire, like a bonfire that was super hot, like, like inside a fireplace. And guess what? In the middle of that fireplace, somebody else showed up from heaven, an angel, or maybe even Jesus. And guess what? They didn't burn. They walked out of the fire like it was no big deal. God protected them even in the fire, in the, in the lions that in the fire. All that happened in Iraq. So the, the three wise men, I think, are maybe great, 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 oops, sorry, angel. Great, 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 great grandchildren of people who had heard stories about the Jews who had been there, about Daniel and about Meshach and Abednego and Shadrach, and they said, we want to know more about this. So they were reading the old Bibles, I think, and then they saw what? A star that was so bright that everybody on that whole side of the earth could see it. It hung in the, in the heavens and it was so bright that everybody went, whoa! That's like a light bulb just turned on in the sky and they followed it and they came to the baby Jesus. Now there is a slight problem that I wanna be honest with you in. They probably didn't come on the same night the shepherds came. They probably came a couple of years later because it's a long journey on a camel. It didn't happen right away, but they still came, and we put them in our manger scene so we can remember that they rode their camels. Um, by the way, they're all holding something. Gifts? Gifts for the baby Jesus. Gifts for the baby Jesus. Anybody remember what they, were, what they brought? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Those were really expensive things. They were super expensive perfumes. And one of them was a spice that they used for burial. <laughs> this is inter entertaining here. I'm <laughs> Which tells you I'm not. Um, they brought gold that they gave to the baby Jesus. They brought uh, spices, and they brought a, a special... Um, kind of ointment that they put on people when they buried them that made them smell nice. Maybe a symbol that one day Jesus was gonna have to die and they came prepared. That's, yeah, that's kind of sad. Um, there are a few others here. Who's this? Anybody wanna guess? He's standing next to the baby Jesus, so that's Joseph. Who is Joseph? His dad? Kind of. It's not really his dad, because his real dad is who? Jesus' real dad is who? God. It's his earth dad. It's kind of like his adopted father. Joseph says, okay, I'll watch over him. And God has to talk to him, and God has to send an angel to talk to Joseph and say, it's going to be okay. I know that this isn't your baby. This is God's baby, but don't freak out. That's what the angel says in the original language. Don't freak out. And, and Joseph says, okay. And he becomes Jesus' adopted dad. And anybody know what he did for work? He was a carpenter. Guess what Jesus was when he grew up? A carpenter, guess who taught Jesus how to cut wood and build things? An interesting thing, by the way, there's not very much wood 
in the Holy Land. There even wasn't back then. So carpenters did a lot more than just cut wood and build tables. They were also bricklayers and stonemasons. They built walls and houses because most of the houses, most of the buildings there in, in Israel are made of rocks. So Jesus probably learned how to work with wood and to work with stone and to build amazing things. Okay, last two. Mary. 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 You know that Mary's probably not very old? She was probably a teenage mom who God said she was so good and she was trying so hard to love him that he picked her out of all the women on the planet to have a baby, this baby. And this is Jesus, born in a manger. Now, this little man, that's, a manger is just a feeding trough. It's so the cow can eat and the donkey can eat. <laughs> Except probably not with a baby in there because that would be noisy. But it's a feeding trough. Only, I'll, can I tell you a secret? This one's made of wood, it looks like. This is how they do it in Europe. So when they make these, they all make them this way, but really there are no feeding troughs like this in Israel. They're cut out of rocks. They just carve a hole in a big rock, they chisel the top out, and then they put hay in it, and that's what the animals eat and drink out of. And so Jesus was probably laid in the hole on the top of a big rock, which they called a manger, and he was a little baby, and, and, and Mary took care of him and raised him and help him grow up. There's one more that I forgot. I don't want to forget. The donkey. This is my favorite because we look very similar. I'm as dignified. I like the donkey for a very special reason. The donkey doesn't get a lot of credit in the story, does it? Nobody really says the donkey is, is pretty cool. Everybody picks something else, the angel, Mary, Joseph, but the donkey is pretty special too because you know what? How, yeah, because all the way from the very north of Palestine, a very pregnant mom rides on the back of the donkey and the donkey just does what Mary and Joseph want it to. And Jesus would never make it to the stable if the donkey hadn't given him a ride. He carried Mary and the baby all the way to Bethlehem. And the donkey is not your favorite? Now it is? Well, that's good. I'm really happy. Plus, plus this donkey's head turns around all the way. I don't think real donkeys do that, but they're pretty flexible. I've, I have, when I was in Israel this last time, I rode a donkey into an old archeological site because my knees weren't very good. And so they put me on a donkey and, and I felt bad for that poor donkey. I thought I was gonna break his back because there's a lot of brad. I was bigger than the donkey. My feet basically just about touched the ground. But I got on this donkey and the donkey smiled, made a couple of noises and off we went. And it carried me for almost five miles. And it didn't complain one time. So that's part of why I like donkeys. I can see carrying a very pregnant Mary and maybe some of their clothes, maybe some things for them to eat, their lunch boxes on the, on the back, and he carried it all the way. That's why I like the donkey. Okay, so all of this is just for me to remind you of the real story. Sometimes we just think it happened. All of a sudden they're all there and it happens, but no, each one plays a part. So when you see a, a sheep or a donkey, I want you to remember the story of how important they were. And uh, I have a little present for you. Would anyone of you like, like to take one of these home? You want the donkey? Okay, wait, 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 wait. We got enough for everybody. We'll get one. And Miss Amy's going to help you. Um, why don't we leave these up here? And, and we're, oh, oh, we're over here too. We can help you in every direction. And we have some over here. So as you go back to your seats, I'll let you pick one out of the treasure box and you can take home a nativity. And if your sister or brother's up here, pick a different one and you can start setting it up yourself, okay? Amen. Merry Christmas. Yeah, amen. 
We're going to do hymn sing now, but I want to read to you the story out of the children's Bible. So you adults who couldn't follow all that because it was so difficult and intense, um, so that you might understand the story. And this will give the kids a chance to get their nativities. This is the story out of Luke 2 in the children's Bible. That same night, in amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. Of all the stars in the dark vaulted heavens, this one shone most clear. It blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale behind it, beside it. God put it there when his baby son was born. It was like a spotlight shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people the way to him. You see, God was like a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these long years for this very moment, and now he wanted to tell everyone. So God pulled out the stops. He sent an angel to tell Mary the good news. He put a special star in the sky to show where, this, where his boy was. And now he was going to send a big choir of angels to come sing the happy song in the world, the happiest song, his happy song. He's here. He's here, they sang. Go and see him, my little boy. Now, where would you send your splendid choir? To a big concert hall, maybe? Or a palace, perhaps? God sent his to a little hillside outside a little town in the middle of the night. He sent all those angels to sing for a raggedy old bunch of shepherds watching their sheep outside Bethlehem. In those days, remember, people used to laugh at the shepherds and say they were smelly and call them other rude names, which I possibly can't mention here. You see, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraff. But God must have thought shepherds were very important indeed because they're the ones he chose to tell the good news to first. At night, some shepherds were out in the open fields warming themselves by a campfire when suddenly the sheep darted. They were frightened by something. The olive trees, they rustled. What was that? Was that a wing? They turned around. Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. Today in David's town in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go and see him. He's sleeping in a manger. Behind the angel they saw a strange glowing cloud, except it wasn't a cloud at all. It was angels, troops and troops of angels, armed with light, and they were singing beautiful songs. Glory to God, to God be fame and honor in all our hoorays. Then as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobble streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, 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 past an inn, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last they reached a tumble-down stable. They caught their breath. Then quietly they tiptoed inside. They knelt on the dirt floor. They had heard about this promised child, and now he was here, heaven's son, the maker of the stars, a, a baby sleeping in his mother's arms. This baby would be like that bright star shining in the sky that night, a light to light up the whole world chasing away darkness, helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine. Lord, we thank you for the gift of our children. We thank you for the, the story, sometimes in a language that we all can understand. Would you come now and as we sing and rejoice, would you come shine your light brighter and brighter into our lives on this Christmas Eve? In Jesus' name, amen.